Hey guys, so Raycast is one of my favorite tools or apps on Mac and I've been using it for a very long time. It covers so many things for me like window management to app launching to chatting with AI to so many other things. In the most basic form, this is just an app launcher, but it can be extended with extensions and it has some AI kind of support in it. So I thought I'd do a dedicated video and then I show you my workflow and the different extensions that I have installed and how I use them. All right, to get started, just go to raycast.com and then install it using this link here or just simply with Homebrew. As of now, it's not available for Windows, so you're only able to use it with Mac. When you install it, you can press Command Space and you'll see this screen here, which shows you the all kind of things that you can do with it. So as I said, it's simply an app launcher. So if you type in the name of the app, it will open up for you and then kind of close it. This is very similar to Alfred, but it's like more capable. One thing I like about it, and this is also part of my workflow, if you go to the settings here and go to advanced, notice that they added this new feature recently, which is the hyper key. Hyper key essentially is just a combination of keys that you set on your keyboard usually. For example, like it's a control shift option uh, command, I think. What this does is every time you press that single key, it just triggers all of these at the same time because Mac does not use these combinations for anything. You can pretty much set any kind of key map on your keyboard without interfering with other kind of special ones. Once you pick up here, for example, you want caps lock to be the hyper key, then anytime you press caps lock, it's gonna trigger those four different buttons at the same time. One practical way I use this is if I go to my extensions and look up for arc, notice here I can set different hotkeys. And this is one of the most useful things as well. You can pretty much set a hotkey for any app you have on your Mac. And in this case, I have Hyper B to my browser. So if I press Hyper B, it just shows and hide my browser. And I have this for all kinds of things. For example, Ghosty, it's Hyper T, as you can see, and you know, some other apps as well. So the next thing I use it for is window management. And if you search for extensions here for Windows or Window, notice that you can pretty much manage your windows in so many ways here, whether to divide in half or one third or whatever. And I have a couple that I use all the time and I have a key map for them. So here's an example. I have Hyper Z that would take like two thirds of my screen and usually like my terminal is kind of the two thirds on this side. And that's how I usually work actually. And you know, when I go full screen, which is Hyper F, and I can press Command B to go back to my browser or Command T to go back my, to my terminal. So in that way, it's pretty fast. And I don't think you need anything else to kind of really have a fast workflow. So with like Hyper and whatever hotkey I have, I can open up any app or toggle it quickly. And then with those window management things here, I can pretty much put them anywhere I want. And that gives me like really fast workflow and I don't really have to do anything else with it. And the next thing I use, I use it for is conversions and like time zone stuff. So for example, if I say here, time in California, it just gives me that time in whatever time zone it is. Or if I say, for example, $1 in euros, for example, it just converts that for you. It's really useful in that way. So you don't have to kind of Google that or do anything with it. Next really cool thing I like to use it for is quick links. Quick links is essentially a way for you to kind of create a link to something and just go there directly. So for example, if I copy this URL here and open up Raycast again, I can say, for example, Raycast website and then put that link here. And this can be apps as well. Like oh, if you open up this one here and you can pick pretty much any app you want and then open it up as well with quick links. In this case, I want to open up Arc. If I save that, if I say Raycast website, notice here, I can simply access the website in one shortcut. That's the cool thing about quick links. There's so many things you can do with it. You can open up apps, web pages and extensions, I think, or commands. Okay, so one more thing I like to use it for is searching for menus. So if you type here search menu, notice that I'm actually looking at the menu for this browser and you can just access everything here. This is really cool. So you don't have to go here and just like look up the menu. You can just pretty much say search menu and you can just search for whatever you want really fast as well. All right, so one last thing I want to talk about is this AI feature. So as I said, it has some support for different AI things and you need to have like a premium plan here which is like $8 a month. So if you have it and you open up Raycast and say summarize web page, notice that it will actually summarize whatever web page you have open and just gives you kind of a summary for all the text written there. And I think they will ask you to install a Chrome browser once you do that once or the first time. So if you do that, you can pretty much summarize any web page you want. Okay, so now let's go through some of the extensions that I like using. If you go to store here, and you can search pretty much for whatever extension you want. Let's say Arc. So I use Arc as my main browser. You can install this extension. Or if you open up Raycast and type in store, you can also search for everything here, which is kind of my preferred way. 
if I type in Arc, notice that you can install whatever you want here. I have Arc installed, so Arc is the first one. If I type in Arc here, you can do pretty much all these things. So opening up tabs or uh, searching tabs. The next extension that I like using is Color Picker, which allows me to, you know, capture any color and it copies it for you and you can just paste it anywhere. The next thing I want to show you is searching for icons. So you can pretty much search for any icons here and then when you select one, it will copy it and you can paste it anywhere. For example, if you're on Figma, you can just copy one and paste it. The next one is this one, which is SVG's logos. This is super cool. So let's say I want to have this um, Golang logo. So let me open up save as code and I can paste pretty much the SVG here. This is usually something I use a lot with, you know, Figma if I'm trying to design like a thumbnail or something like that. The next one is GIFs. You can search for whatever GIFs you want if you want to do that. And I have also this one, which is Shell. This is super cool. The Shell extension essentially allows you to trigger pretty much anything on your Mac. And this is like a new feature. So they recently added the ability to, if you press at, you can pretty much use AI to interact with any of these apps. So if you install this shell command here or shell extension, you can do all kinds of things like, here's an example, how many files I have in my download. So it uses the shell extensions to do that and it runs and then it just tells you the thing you're looking for. And you can do things like hide stuff or remove things or whatever. And it uses AI for that. It's pretty awesome. So that's my kind of shell extension here. And the next one is Spotify, which you can guess what this does. It just, you know, plays songs and you can move to next or previous song, things like that. Next extension would be Unsplash. And I use this mainly to kind of change my desktop wallpaper. So you can search for things, pick whatever image you want. And then once you hit enter, you can press command K. You can just set it to any of monitor you want. This is a fun way if you want to change your desktop wallpaper. And the last one I use is kill process. So this is super cool. I can press on that and essentially pick whatever process I want and then just kill it. So these are the main extensions I've been using. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is their support for AI. You have to actually sign up for it, which I think it's very worth it. To open it, I have Hyper P and this will open up this window here, which allows me to interact with any model I want. If you press this arrow here, you can select any model you want and then chat with it. I like to use it this way mainly because it allows me to just, you know, learn things and not just rely fully on AI. And, you know, you can also add like instructions to make it very specific to how you want it to kind of interact with you. And also you can change the models here. You can create presets. So after you kind of create a instruction here, you can create a preset for this. And so you can access quickly. In my case, for example, I have this Golang expert, I call it. It chooses Claude and then it has a specific instruction for it. That's how AI works here. Also, if you open up Raycast this way, if you press tab, you can use like AI here, but it's for quicker questions, I think. This is my primary way to interact with AI, by the way. It's with this chat thing here. And I have a key map for it, which allows me to kind of toggle it super quickly. You can even attach some files. So if you have like a specific, you know, coding file, you can attach it. Okay. So these are all the things I wanted to cover about Raycast. There's so many more things here. You can create extensions, you can create commands, and you can even have like, I think, focus mode. This is something they also added recently, which kind of blocks all different apps that you have running or you want to, uh, to block and you can just focus for a while. So if you kind of scroll down here, you'll see pretty much everything you can do with it. And yeah, you just have to kind of look for them and learn what they do. All right, that's all I wanted to share in this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.